Hey there, Courtney Henderson here with FamilyTreeMagazine.com. As you can see today, I thought I would share some family history writing prompts with everyone. These are great if you just need a place to start. You can share these with your writing group. You can share these with your genealogy group. Teachers, share these with your students, get them writing. These will skew for a little bit older students. So go ahead and watch the video, get some ideas. And then if you need to rewrite them to be more age appropriate for your class, then go ahead and do that. So let's go over some writing prompts. These are not all that are in the related um, family history writing prompts article that you'll find on familytreemagazine.com. But I do have about 30 here, one for pretty much each day of the month if you wanna just take a month and bang out some family history writing. So let's go ahead and look at some different examples. Okay, this one is you imagine that you're one of your descendants and you're writing about your present self. So that will definitely take some thought, but uh, it's kind of an interesting perspective. Newspaper reporter, if you are an adult, you may have taken a journalism class. This will take you back to that. Remember to include that who, what, when, where, why, how, all those things that we had to do. Kind of a little bit different way of writing, kind of a little bit different way of thinking. So this is definitely um, an interesting prompt. A family tree, quote unquote, this is really cute. So imagine that your family repre was represented as a literal tree. Maybe your family is an oak, strong. Maybe your family is a palm tree, had to weather some storms. So this might be fun to research a few different types of trees and see if you find one that best describes your family. Oh, precious family traditions. This is pretty self-explanatory. Just some prompts here to kind of get your your memories rolling. Um, what's the history behind a tradition? Do you still do it? Or do you remember just doing it with your family? So just a really great place to start. Alternative ending. So maybe you have a tragedy in your, in your family history and how would that have changed? Or... Um, Maybe somebody made a choice and something happened. What if they had made a different choice? So again, just, just some, some deep thinking here. Two ancestors meeting, maybe they didn't know each other. Maybe they're from different time periods. Maybe, oh, we're, we're gonna talk about that one later. <laughs> That's a different one. So this one is just two people in the same generation who just didn't meet. So maybe someone from your father's side and then someone from your mo mother's side. Okay, there's so many holidays, so many celebrations and so many different cultures. Just pick one that you imagine your ancestor participating in and, and narrate it. You know, what does it look like? What are the sights, the smells, the sounds that are associated with the, your ancestor being in the midst of celebrating that holiday? Thank you note. Remember these? Does, does anyone even write these anymore? I, <laughs> I try to get my kids to write them. But anyway, we know our good manners and we should write a thank you note to our ancestor. And what are you thanking them for? Hopefully um, it was that they followed through on a hot stock tip <laughs> back a long time ago, but just anything. It could be something small as well. Ancestor meals. Who doesn't love to think about food and talk about food and write about food and all of the tradition that's associated with that? Um, as I've mentioned in other videos, my family, both sides are from Eastern Kentucky, just hardworking mountain people. And there's a great line in a book where the lilies bloom. Um, it was, it's an older book. I don't know if anyone's familiar with it, but she has a line in there that says, we are mountain people, so we eat mountain food. And that always makes me think of my grandparents and all of that. So, um, and I, you know, grew up on some of those meals and some of those recipes. So it's just nice to think about maybe them sitting around the dinner table and, and what kind of food they had there and what maybe they were talking about. Love note or poem. This is, if you're a romantic, this is perfect for you. You can pick someone from your family or you can just 
make make one up who maybe was a friend or someone imaginary and write a love note or a poem that they might have shared. And it's really neat here. So really take the historical period into consideration. You know, your ancestors in, you know, medieval era are going to have a very different terminology and, and way of saying things than they would in, say, a Victorian time. Six word story. So if you aren't familiar with this, this says channel your inner Hemingway. There's, I think it's a little bit of an urban legend. I, I don't know if it's true or not, but supposedly Ernest Hemingway wrote a six word story that went for, for sale, baby shoes never worn. And how much does that say? And what is that story just in those six words? So this is sort of this idea. I will also say there are some really fun contests that you can enter that just take either um, six words or the first line of a story. And there's one, and I'll link to it in the video description, but you have to come up with the most horrible first sentence of a novel that you could possibly think of. And the whole idea is from that whole, it was a dark and stormy night. So every year this group holds a contest to see who can write the most deliciously terrible uh, beginning first sentence. So that might be a great exercise if you want to do this writing prompt for your family history. Surname origins. So I done a video about our surname online research guide and you can check that out. But this is just doing a little bit of that research where did your last name come from? Write about it. Don't don't just research it. Write about how that happened. I don't know if anyone here is familiar with other Edward Rutherford. He writes giant, giant historical fiction tomes, and he has one, Sarum. It's about London, and it starts with deer walking into the forest of where London would be and then goes all the way through the generations, and that is a really good example of you know, he'll go, he follows like a, a family and you can see how their surname developed, at, you know, in the story. So that's kind of cool. It's kind of neat to think about that kind of stuff. Interesting story, pretty self-explanatory. Go ahead and write down just something crazy you've uncovered or something that you've heard your whole life. Your uh, ancestor clothing, this is great you know, especially if you're into fashion and you can really get detailed just to sort of hone your writing skills, describe the stitching, describe if you were sitting next to them and touch their sleeve, you know, what would that material feel like? What would it sound like? You can really, really get into some detail here. You may not use it for your story, but it really gets sort of that writer's mind going that something a little out of the ordinary that you don't normally do. Naming traditions, again, we talk briefly about this as far as surname naming traditions in the other video, but this is also first names, middle names, maiden names, you know, just how all of those are passed down and, and shared from generation to generation. You know, where, where did that come from? Why did that start? And who, who was, you know, if you're a third, who was the original person? And you can just kind of, kind of go from there. Okay, so um, imagine your ancestor encountering something for the very first time. Um, yeah, this isn't my ancestor, this is my mom, but I love her story. She clearly remembers the first time her dad brought home a pizza. And it's so funny, they're, they're no big deal now, right? Like it's just, you can go anywhere and get a pizza, but it was kind of a big deal when she was growing up. And she said, I, I, we were all just like, what is this? It's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> but she remembers that. That's a memory for her. Okay, this is a pretty classic one. So you can write a letter as if you are one of your ancestors. You can write a letter to an ancestor you've never met. So there are a couple of different of these write a letter examples, but again, just a great writing exercise. Okay, big decision. Maybe your ancestor faced a big decision and they they made it. You know, how did they 
come to that conclusion? What led them to make the decision that they made? Ask your family if, if you want some a different way to prompt, kind of ask around and see, you know, what's something you've always heard that you'd like to know more about? And sometimes that can really get your creative juices flowing just by talking with other people. Life lessons, write down five life lessons you feel you've learned from your ancestors. And then you can write an essay with the idea that, you know, maybe someday your children, grandchildren, future descendants will read it and you can preserve those for them. And that's, that's another just great way to start writing um, some family history down. Book genre. So this is something that probably wouldn't take a lot of time, but it would require, again, a little bit of thought. If you were going to write a book, what genre would it be? You know, do you have a really great mystery story in your family, a really beautiful love story? So just take a bit and jot down some notes about what, if you were going to publish this book, where would they put it in the library? I was going to say bookstore, but sadly those don't exist too much anymore. Favorite quote. We have some crazy quotes in our family and it's, it's great, you know, to think about almost like inside jokes, right? With your family or things that maybe you heard your grandmother or your mother say, and um, just, do you know where that came from? Maybe you can make up a story about it. So just again, taking in a second to think a little bit differently about your family history. Ancestor social media. This is pretty interesting. It, let's say your ancestor had social media back in the 1800s. What would that look like? Write a post, you know, write a tweet and, and just from their perspective and, and see what you come up with. Family heirloom story. Now we have an entire article, an entire article about this on familytreemagazine.com. They're called treasure tales. And we have a form that you can use, but this is just a really brief writing prompt to kind of get you going. And if you love antiques, I love antiques. It's so much fun to go to a flea market or an antique mall and pick something up. And, and I had an aunt who loved antiques and she would always say, I wish it could talk. I wish it, I wish it could tell its story. And you can write that narrative. And so take a precious family heirloom that you have and, and write, jot down its story. Immigrant diary. This one is great. If you know you have immigrant ancestors, dive into some of that research. If you haven't already, find out what the ship name they were on. Find out maybe who they were traveling with. A lot of times people would travel together. And so just from their perspective, what are they experiencing? Were there storms? You can really, really get into a lot of detail here. What did it feel like being on this long journey and, and all those things? So that's a really, really great prompt. This is the different time periods I was telling you about. So kind of the same thing, but you put them to dinner and this is just kind of an interesting take on it, right? So you have one from one time period, one from another, obviously the food's going to be different. The manners may be different. So this is a really fascinating exercise. I love this one. Outsider's perspective. So just someone looking in on your family, maybe it was neighbors, Maybe it was someone else that your family had connections with, but wasn't actually part of your family. Take it from their perspective. What did they see your family do? And, and what did they see your family, you know, what were their struggles? Uh, what were their celebrations? And again, just a great exercise where it's kind of a, a little bit way to think differently about your family. So think about it from an outsider's perspective best friends. So we've all had best friends in our lives. What did your ancestors look like? If you don't know, make it up. Like this says, maybe they went on an adventure, maybe they got into a little bit of trouble. So this is just a really great thing to imagine or to tell. Right to vote. Um, imagine the first time your ancestor got to vote. Maybe it was when they finally turned 18 or whatever the voting age was in their time period. Maybe they're an African-American and they, they 
What did that feel like when they got to vote or a woman, a female ancestor? What did that feel like? So just lots of options here. You know, what was the process like? That will give you some historical research you can do. What about the other people in line? You know, maybe they look around and see people like them or maybe people are staring at them angrily. And again, you can just really, really create a great narrative here. And finally, we have hometown. I love this one. This is great just because I love this sort of research, you know, using the historical pictures and postcards, write a tourism ad, but write it in for their time period and highlight the attractions. And you know, what would you write to get someone to come to your ancestors hometown? And that does it. That's all of our prompts for today. Please take a second, subscribe to our channel, and please watch more genealogy videos. Thanks so much.